Welcome back to this week's OIS podcast. Today, our host, Dr. Firas Rehal, speaks with Pierre Biardon, CEO of Dutch Ophthalmic Research Center, a global leader in retinal surgical instruments. Firas, catch us up on what DORC is all about. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the OIS Retina podcast. Again, uh, I'm Faraz Rahal. I'm a member and a partner at the Retina Vitreous Associates in Los Angeles and a partner at Excite Ventures, uh, centered in New York City. I'm delighted to have as my guest today, Pierre Biardon, who is the CEO of DORC, or Dutch Ophthalmics, as all of us in the retina business has known them for many years. Um, Pierre comes to us, I believe, from Paris. Thank you, Pierre, for joining us today. Thank you so much for us. Actually, I'm sitting in my office in the neighborhood of Rotterdam in the Netherlands. Well, but I'm originally French. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I'm glad you're in Rotterdam. I guess, it, I guess that makes more sense given who you're with now. Absolutely. <laughs> are you originally from France or Belgium or where are you originally no, from? I'm originally from, uh, from France, yes, right. absolutely. And I, I, I want to review a little bit some of your previous positions, which gives rise to that history and then how you came to be where you are now. You were, and I'll go in chronological order, most recent, and then you can correct me if I've got any of this wrong, uh, CEO of Human Optics uh, between 2017 and 2020. Uh, uh, Pierre was president of the Alcon Labs in Paris from 2013 to 2016, president of Carl Zeiss, also in France, 2010 to 2013, and uh, director general was the title I saw for Carl Zeiss Meditech, also uh, same company, but different title, 2005 to 2013. Um, what can you tell us about these previous positions? What did you like or dislike, if you wish, you know, however free you feel to talk about it? And then ultimately, uh, Maybe you can then tell us a little bit about the human optics program, because I'm not as familiar with that one. Uh, sure. Well, I think, thank you very much. Yes. And, and before that, I spent 10 years with uh, Supervision and Novartis. Um, so I, I saw you've been involved in the Visudon development. Uh, yeah. and, and I've been the first to launch it in 99 in Switzerland, uh, about 18 months before, um, before others did. And that was my, my very first contact with retinal specialists. So <laughs> just, just as for the anecdote, right? So, yeah. no, look, you know, I was. Was very fortunate because as you you said I, I you know I worked um, 30 years in the ophthalmic space actually uh, 20 years uh, as executive um, uh, worked with uh, you know blue chip companies like cars eyes Halcon. so you know you you learn a lot with those uh, those big corporates so you know certainly uh, they're a benchmark in you know the way the, the way you work and I, I I was also very fortunate to work with uh, with great with great people. You know, I think there is a common thread to 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 my background is that as far as I can remember, and since my very first job, it's been about integrating uh, new businesses, about managing change, and about growing businesses, right, and building up leading teams. And if you're asking me what I liked very much, <laughs> I like very much. You know, of course, you remember the numbers in the great. But what is most important is, you know, is is the adventure with the with the people, you know, great people you've met. You'll know, be customers, great surgeons uh, who became friends for some of them, right? And 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 it's a, it's a, it's about you know the, the the way you're walking together. So that that's really what I would say. And 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 I've been constantly learning all around all around the way that's also what is what is great is just that you're learning all the time whether you know in situations that are tough sometimes but you always you always learn it's a little bit like surgery right <laughs> a lot <laughs> so, like surgery yeah exactly um yeah so so that's it and what what i what i didn't like is uh, uh, at the end is is to be part of those big large corporate because they because they become very very um, very complex self-centered organization where where um, you know I, I felt I wanted to do something more entrepreneurial so uh, so that's how I became CEO at human optics which is a small company German company 
Uh, I knew the the shareholder, and then he asked me to uh, basically reposition the company and then put it back on track, which I which uh, which I did. Uh, it's well known for its uh, specialized IOLs, in particular the artificial iris that you might have heard of uh, in the United sure. States. So one of the big achievements I have is that I, I brought the artificial iris together with the team to the FDA, and we've been the first ophthalmic device to get the breakthrough status from the FDA, which was a little bit of a poison gift because all of a sudden you've got <laughs> most of the ophthalmic division of the FDA, which is working for you for less than six months because it has to be less than six months uh, to, to, to get you to get the approval. And we were not FDA certified. So it's been a great adventure. And we work also on the CMS um, listing uh, with the team so that, uh, you know, the, the device would be reimbursed, which it is now, and uh, and it's enjoying great great success in the U.S. So it's a big, uh, it's been a big success for us. And the other thing that I learned there at Human Optics was China, uh, where I had you know some experience in the past indirectly, but we did about a third of our business in China. Uh, so that that that's also what I, I learned there. And then you know we we filled also the innovation portfolio, which were which were kind of um, a week when I joined, and uh, and we made it a, a better and attractive uh, company so that it would be bought and acquired by by a Chinese uh, strategic investor. So that and that's how. That product is very interesting, the artificial iris. I wasn't aware of this, but I, I think one of my patients here in Los Angeles was one of the first to get it in the U.S. I think UCLA was one of the sites, and I had done trauma surgery on this patient and repack, repaired a retinal detachment and you know removed the lens, yeah. and his iris was severely damaged. So uh, we did some staging, and I, I sent him to my friends at UCLA, and uh, he was one of, the, I think, the first person in the trial he took. He turned out very, very well. This this patient, very appreciative of your of your development. Obviously, I, I'm glad to talk to you about that. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a great, great product and great surgery. So these are some of the most magnificent and complex surgeries I've seen in my yeah. life. Yeah, yeah, agree, agree. Um, so how do you how do you view these positions in the context of bringing you to your current position with? With Dork, who, of course, all the retina surgeons who are observing here today, are, we're all very familiar with Dork for many, many years. And maybe tell us a little bit of history of Dork for those who aren't as familiar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, when I, I so I got free uh, from 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 human optics, I could have stayed. The the bio, you know, would have liked me to stay, but you know, I got approached by Dork, and I said that's that's. That's the job of my dreams, and I'm still saying it. So that's the good news. <laughs> I just, just, just love it. I always wanted to be in a, an innovation-driven company in ophthalmology because this is this is what I can. Um, and uh, and so when when I was was uh, was off this job, I was really extremely extremely excited about it. Um, so 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 Dork is. Um, as a global player in retina, um, so so and has always been. It, it it's it has started as a, as a startup back in '83 in Rotterdam. Was mainly then uh, an instruments maker and developer, right? So so this is this explains why. Uh, we we have in our genome still uh, innovation because this is what we've been been born with, uh, collaborating with surgeons and developing products that they need. And 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 all through the years, Dork has been has been really a, a leader um, in innovation uh, in retinal surgery. So we we've brought you know the the light into the eye so today in the US we're the only we're having the only led system uh, on the US market uh, we were, we're the only one to have a dual mode pump in our in our EVA machine where we combine flow and, and vacuum technology we were the first one to bring the two dimensional car we Brought, we invented 27 gauge. So Dork is 27 gauge, and it's by far the most performing product in the in the in the market today. Where we've got, and we have evidence of that, that we've got the best performance, the highest uh, share um, in 27 gauge surgeries. Uh, you know the VR dyes, which we're well known uh, for. We're we we're world leaders in. Um, 
in VR dyes. Uh, so we, we, we registered them in the US market with Vision Blue in cataract, but we're also the one and only um, uh, posterior dye approved by the FDA with tissue blue that we launched at the outbreak of COVID and it's a fantastic success. So we had to become much more digital like others, but but this one is a clear, uh, is a clear example uh, of a great success. Uh, great success stories with more than than 30,000 surgeries done with tissue blue to date right and we launched it in april last year uh, so there are many uh, many other things if you would look at the portfolio but that that's really innovation is what 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 doc is a uh, what doc is about indeed yeah no question uh, i think they've always been viewed and uh, i've been practicing a long time as a company that's innovative but also uh, has this uh, appearance and correctly uh, of really precision engineering you know the tools the handheld instruments and so forth have always been super precise you obviously have a great team of engineers how many engineers do you have approximately now at, at dork working on instruments and so forth we have in purely in r and d we have 50 engineers so this is this is about 10 percent this is more than well 10% of the workforce and overall in R&D because we don't just have engineers, we've got software engineers and so on and so forth. We've got more than 10% of our employees who work in, in R&D, absolutely. You've been in the eye space a long time. You're now a, the CEO of a surgical company, a good one and a well-known one, a great one around the world. How do you view the role of the CEO specifically? I, you obviously gave a lot of thought to that entering the position and, and maybe that's changed as you've evolved the position. How do you view the role? And then I want to talk to you about one of the aspects you mentioned yourself, focus on you know market share, obtaining, growing, uh, maintaining market share in a competitive marketplace like this. Well, oh, many questions in one question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's food for thought. We can revisit some of it. <laughs> okay, Start so, with the CEO so, part. In so the watch me because I could read a book. I could write a book on it, but uh, <laughs> but we'll try to avoid that. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> seriously. So you know, in the role of the CEO, uh, you know, you were asking me what I learned. So, so I had to. Uh, I had to 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 learn from great great CEOs, you know, including one of them being my mentor early on in my career. Um, so you see, also, you know, uh, the things that would you 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 that that are working well or that you believe are not working well that you you wouldn't like to do so um, or that you don't like. Uh, but I, I've, I've put together with time kind of, of my, my, my leadership model, so to speak, right? So I, so I, would, I, would, gi I would give you the usual MBA answers, the, like it depends, right? So, but, but I've got a consistent approach, right? So, so I think what, it, what is, you know, in any company I, 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 I join, um, I always applied the, the, same, the same method. Uh, and, and the common thread there is, um, is, is to build up, you know, a, a compelling vision, right? So that, that, that you will share with your, with your teams and bring the guys together with you. Um, build up, you know, uh, challenge the strategy or put together the, a new strategy. You know, it, it happens, you have to start everything from scratch. And obviously, it all it all depends, you know, on on what's the status of the company. So if I take uh, if I take human optics, it was much more like turnaround and realignment kind of status. What you needed to do, and then you act in a different way, as to when you're you're uh, with the with a company like Doc, which has been pre-COVID, and also within COVID. But when I joined, you know, in the middle of COVID, pre-COVID, we've been very successful, like growing, you know. Uh, uh, nine percent year on year the past three years uh, prior to COVID. So, uh, so there you pay very much attention not to break the toy, as I always say, and you know look at what you need to adapt, change, and and that's what you do. And um, and then what's super super important as a CEO is that you make sure that 
you get all your organization aligned with your strategy, right? So you look at your systems, you look at your structure, how people work together, you know, uh, what kind of team you want to have, where the gaps are. You look at your systems and you look at your culture, your people, you know, what you want to have uh, and how, you know, so, because if you, if you have a misalignment with all those elements and with a strategy, it's, it's the recipe for failure. On the other hand, if you succeed on this, Usually it works pretty well, so that's 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 you know the way I I am working, um, and and obviously I'm I'm you know I, I guess I'm part of um, the twenty percent of CEOs you know who delegate quite to a large extent right so I'm not a micromanager. As I always tell my guys, a good reason for firing someone as a, a leader would be for me if he's a micromanager. And you find that more and more, you know, it's especially in big corporate institutions, which I, I feel it's, it's, it's a disaster uh, because it creates all sorts of, of, of negative spirals that bring, that bring the companies to big, uh, to big, to big failures. So that doesn't mean you should not be controlling, monitoring, you know, the plan that you've been putting together according to the priorities that you've been putting together. That's clear. But what, but what you need is to, is to have, uh, is to have people, you know, executing and, you know, being motivated and being engaged with the company. I think that that's, that's a key criteria. And, um, and for that, then they, you need to take responsibility, but they need to be allowed to take responsibility and accountability too. So again, I could speak for hours on yeah, no, the role of the CEO and leader. I, I, I enjoyed hearing that. That's very clear. And I was, I'm interested in your comment about the 20% who don't micromanage. I didn't realize that was the proportion, but as a managing partner of a pretty big uh, medical firm, nothing like a huge company, uh, the micromanagement is a problem. <laughs> it is it's, hard, a problem. it's hard for some of us who have a little bit of obsessive compulsive natures, which is a lot of people who get far in this world sometimes yeah. to back off and not micromanage. It's a human instinct, but I agree totally with you. You, you talked about the vision, the broader message, the mission, aligning the different parts of the company. I, I totally agree. And, and that's brilliant. Did you have this notion? You said this is the dream job. So heading into the job, did had you already a lot of preconceived ideas about what that message and mission mission was going to be for you and your tenure, or did that evolve after you arrived? Well, well, I would say you know when you get into a job, uh, you you know you you've got the very famous first ninety days or hundred depends on the book you read, right? So, but yeah. <laughs> but that's about the first three months. So where where obviously you know you prepare yourself beforehand, you know depending on what kind of documents you 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 you've got beforehand. But uh, but basically at the end of these ninety days, where you kind of audit the situation, you meet the people like I met more than 10% of the people. We've got about 500 people at Dork, right? So, so I guess I made about 50 interviews when, 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 when I joined, right? So, so you, you really, uh, you really got a, got a, and in a very structured way, right? So it's not by accident and just to say hello. So, so, so you just, just, just audit the, audit the situation and, and you know, at the end you, you, you get the sense of your priorities, you know, and, um, and you build up your team and you build up your shoulder plan and then then that's how you get there so yes you would evolve and 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 come coming with preconceived ideas is 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 cert certainly not a good thing right because reproducing what you've been doing before you can you could be doing making major major failure and right? so so, so I, I would not advise this certainly not okay. i'm sure and i want to come back now to the uh the market share question. One of the one of the missions, I'm sure, is market share driven. You have certain market share in the U.S., certain market share in Europe. I know the U.S. market pretty well. I don't know the European market very well myself. Um, you know, clearly you have competitors. Alcon has had a big market share in surgical ophthalmology in the U.S. for as long as I've been an ophthalmologist and beyond. So. Um, how does that drive 
decision making for you what what and i don't need you to be too specific you know trade secrets and so forth but you know how how does that shape strategy how much of your time is spent on this strategic part of it regarding market share let's say particularly in the us since a lot of our audience is us although they they're also in europe what do you think about all this how much of your time is spent on that and what kind of strategies does one as a ceo think about to build uh, market share well, you know, uh, well, the U.S. example for, for Dork is, is, a, is a good example, right? Because uh, uh, in the U.S., we've got about um, uh, twice as less market share as we have, you know, in the, in the whole world. So, so you can look at it as, as the half empty glass or the half full, and we take it as the half full because that means we've got a major growth opportunity in the U.S. And we're, we realize that long time ago um, and and for that as you said you know the market share growth is a, is a key strategic goal yeah. and and the good news is that we succeed in uh, we succeed in doing this right so so we're we're uh, we're number two in terms of install base in the US market so uh, so so we're progressing well so how, how do we do that right so the first thing is that um, in the U.S., if we look at the, uh, the situation like like three, four years ago, and when I joined Dork, you know, I had very good friends, retina surgeons in the in the U.S. I, you know, I, we had conversations, right? So, so, you know, and what came out was, yeah, you know what, you guys, you, you've got great products, great technology, um, but you were never quite able to communicate in a way that, you know, people in the U.S. would really get in a simple, easy way what your technology can do. So I said, well, okay, I were kind of a little bit of, of engineer driven, right? So, so also in our communication, which we have changed. Um, and then the thing was about, you know, the, 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 the coverage of the market, right? So because as much, what, as much as your technology can be leading and our technology is leading by far in some, in some areas, um, if you guys are not sure that uh, we will provide the right service, you know, that you will build this kind of ecosystem where, where you surgeons or the hospitals or the purchasers uh, the directors feel good with it and that you're certain you're going to get the right level of service uh, so that you, 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 will, you will get, you will, get all, you will be able always to work. So then that's a problem. You can have the best technology, but the level of service is super important. So what, what we've done is, is to, to strengthen, uh, strengthen our, 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 our team, strengthen our distribution. So now we've got uh, 22, uh, 22 22 field based sales and and um, and uh, and application and technicians on on the US market so we've got we've got a great uh, we've got a great uh, coverage um, we are also the only one to be fully dedicated to retina and you know with what is specific to ophthalmology is that it's a niche right and retina is a niche in the niche so the level of understanding of of this area is super important so we've got gr- a great team in the in, in the U.S. that we've developed in size, but also in skills, right? And, and in the way we work in the organization. And that has proven to be um, very uh, positive in the way we now bring our technology uh, that is clearly differentiated from, from, uh, from competition. What we do also, we work a lot on supporting on training and education so we've placed uh, our machine in seven out of the the ten uh, top teaching institutions in the U.S. So that that's I guess a a great sign of trust for for our technology, right? That those those great institutions have have chosen us. Uh, as an evidence, you know, uh, one of our big wins was uh, Johns Hopkins, who's chosen us as uh, they are a primary uh, care uh, suppliers. So that, 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 that was really a big, big 
big pride for us to have uh, done that. But we we um, we've established also the um, Jumpstart Retina uh, Fellow uh, Training uh, modules uh, programs. Uh, uh, so with some 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 of your colleagues, quite close colleagues like Colin uh, McCannell in yeah. particular, but also Gaurav Shah and Ash Tiwari and Dean Elliott. So so you know all, all that, and um, we we we've worked specifically. Uh, uh, increased also that during COVID uh, uh, training webinars, right, which 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 has gathered hundreds of doctors, uh, have helped us to get much better known and generate leads for uh, for uh, for our our business. And again, you know, in the U.S., which is not just in the U.S., but in particular in the U.S., the economics are very important. Yeah. So what our technology also brings is that we reduce setup time in the OR, which is which is pretty important. Uh, we increase efficiencies. So if we, if we look at all the innovations we've developed, that's definitely um, what we also bring. So um, that's what we do as an example in the U.S. and that we're uh, we're accelerating. We've got a strategic initiative which is called Go Big in the U.S. So more than that, answer. <laughs> I like. I like <laughs> that. You know, this is what golfers <clears throat> and I totally applaud the, the strategy. What golfers call, and I'm not a golfer, the long game. You know, you're investing time and energy and obviously um, um, money into. Uh, fellows and residents uh, observing and using and training on your equipment. So, hence, you know, Johns Hopkins and places like UCLA who are yeah. huge institutions for training fellows and residents. And that really is the long game and that's the sustainable game. It, you, winning over, uh, you know, one surgeon is always excellent, but winning over institutions that train future generations is the, is the long game. And I give you a lot of credit sometimes CEOs, by the nature of their position, might see the short game more than the long game. There you go. <laughs> Congratulations. Let's talk a little bit in our minutes remaining here. You mentioned them, but maybe a little bit more about the technologies themselves. And I have a couple specifically that I, I know are evolving and important as part of your armamentarium. Tissue Blue, and um, I'm familiar with it, and I did use it. And it's an excellent uh, staining for the ILM. Interestingly, some years ago, I tried one of the blues for ILM when it was still well off label here and just a sort of experimental. And it wasn't as good. I don't know which one that was, to be honest with you. But the current tissue blue that you're, you have commercially available now is excellent. And I used it recently a number of times. Um, how do you see that as becoming differentiated? You're obviously succeeding with it, but differentiated from ICG. Is it mostly on safety? Is it on efficacy? What is the message with tissue blue for ILM stain? Well, it's both actually, right? So, so, uh, so as we said, it's the one and only uh, FDA approved product, right? So, uh, which you know, for me, that that means when you're using it, you know, you're not using off-label product, which is always a problem nowadays. Certainly, in a country like like the U.S., right? <laughs> but beside that, uh, I think in terms of efficacy, you know, it's formulated with uh, polyethylene glycol, uh, so which is which is you know a, 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 an additive that um, that makes the product. Um, much more dense, so it increased density, but also it brings, you know, it, it makes this uh, cohesive ball, you know, that goes and then spread as you've seen it uh, mm -hmm. as a surgeon. So that comes, you know, from the, the way the way we formulated it. Uh, and that, that's, um, that's, a, that's a, 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 big, a big advantage. So it's also a, a relatively low viscosity if you compare with ICG uh, off-the-shelf preparation. So, so it's easier, easier to use. It has high density and it's stable because the other ICG products are not, are not stable. So, uh, so this is, this is, um, this is really, um, this is really the big uh, the big difference, and and yes, ICG has a potential toxicity, and that it has been you know described in the literature. Um, 
And, and of course, you know, as a pharma great product, you know, that means we've got obligations like doing post-market surveillance. So it's not just, you know, the safety of today, but it's the safety of tomorrow as well that we, that we bring with a pharma great product. Totally agree. And, um, the, uh, I'm, the usage of this product is increasing, I know, in the U.S. Is it increasing at a rate that you're happy with so far, notwithstanding the limitations the pandemic put on all companies? Are you happy with the growth rate so far? Oh, yes, we're, we're extremely happy. As I said, you know, just, just for the U.S., we've, uh, we've achieved here to date about, you know, uh, 30,000 procedures uh, that, that with with tissue blue again we launched it back in april really at the outbreak of, of covid and uh, and and you know with uh, uh, thanks to some of your colleagues you know we've built up webinars in the us you know to to really uh, promote the product train people on the product and um, so that you know when the the number of surgeries uh, grew so then the usage of tissue blue grew uh, as well so no we're we're really very very um, happy with the development and we've got 12 out of the top 13 uh, us hospitals that are um, already um, using tissue blue which again you know correlates with what i said before yeah. so so yeah. it's uh, we may say it's a trusted product already yeah. so that's i good. think it's a, it's a winner let's talk about the eva vitrectomy system that's a, obviously a big big uh, of great interest to you the technology evolves gets better again we spoke about uh, the reputation uh, earned by dort for tremendous engineering obviously a lot of thousands of man hours went into developing this device initially what is uh what when when you when your sales force wants to go out and talk to surgeons about eva people who are using other products or considering opening a new center what are the differentiating features they like to talk about what do they what do they express as good reasons to uh choose the eva system versus some of the other ones Oh, uh, so yeah, so so no. Look, I, I think the 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 um, the the unique. Well, it's not just the machine, as you know, right? So it's a full system with uh, with everything that 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 goes together with it. So so you know, obviously, when we talk about Eva, we talk about fluidics. So that's that's the first thing, and then it's the combination of what are very specific. Uh, pump is bringing to the uh, fluidics performance it's uh, the 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 tdc so the dual uh, dual car uh, and it's the illumination so again you know we brought light into the eye so so and we're the only one to have led in the uh, to bring the uh, led illumination into the eye in in, in the us and, and then what you get is really an enhanced control as a surgeon right so Again, on, on the Carter, the, the TDC was, we were the first one to introduce that uh, five years ahead of competition back in 2014, right? So uh, just telling, you know, what this company is about. And, and, and it's been used according to our own data in, in over 80,000 surgeries so far with a great, great track uh, record. Um, and obviously, when you combine the cutter uh, with the, the VTI pump, that's that's the name of our pump, which is offering vacuum and flow. Um, uh, so that's where you get you you get the full performance and benefit of this system uh, with the flow rate that uh, ensures stable aspiration flow in vitreous and BSS, um, and that 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 gives you. You know, and you're the one to judge if you use it. <laughs> but also in mobile retina, this is also what when I saw my first surgeries when I joined, there were pretty tough cases. And then this is, this is you know, the friend surgeon show me see, you know, so you see in this and when you go, you know, <laughs> there and with a mobile retina, how, you know, how, how great it is to have such a, control which is which is essential right so ultimately the um, as a surgeon and we all talk about this and we talk about it with the corporate folks too uh 
with all the different bells and whistles that come on our very fancy and very elegant machines, the quality of the cutter still is 90% of the meaningful uh, quality to the surgeon. That, that description you just gave of how well you can shave over a mobile retina, yeah. those basic points are really from an efficiency and, and safety standpoint, those are the most important things. And I'm glad that you're focusing on it and your company does focus on it. And I hear the talk and when, when the product's being promoted. And I, I totally agree with that. And I think you're focusing on the, right, on the right parts of what means something to us in real practice every day with both easy and tough cases. How much of the message when you're trying to, and I'm not asking you to be a salesman here, but you have a sales force who report to you at some point how much of the message in, in flipping a, a client from a, a product, say an Alcon or another company to your product, how much of that has to be economic in the U.S. versus, say, other parts of the world, or is it the same everywhere? Well, you know, it, it's about the same everywhere um, because, you know, all the, all, all the countries you go from China to the U.S. to to Europe to government-driven healthcare system or purely private-driven systems, you know, every, everybody's facing the same situation that you've got more and more patients that are getting older and older and they've got more and more high problems, you know, and other diseases yeah. and nobody has got enough money ever to cover those costs. So economics are absolutely essential, but more than economics, it's about your also what I call market access, which is, you know, what what kind of value do you get for your money? And I think, you know, this is this is this is absolutely um, absolutely critical. You know, part of our markets are tender driven, so we like public tender driven. So we're always in competition with, you know, uh, a big element on on price, on cost of procedures. Uh, but unfortunately about performance, which is, which is important. So that's the big challenge, right? It's access to innovation for the patients, you know, and for the, the healthcare system, you know. Uh, but that's why we, we also work a lot, uh, and it's part of our strategy, you know, to always be better at, w- at what we're doing. And, you know, like operational excellence is, is super important for us um, in order to generate the margins that will allow us on the one hand to finance innovation and R&D and on the other hand to be competitive on the, on the market, which we so far manage pretty well to do. Makes a lot of sense. I want to give a little plug to you and your company. One of my favorite, and I, I didn't mention this to you before, but one of my favorite tools in all of ophthalmology is your disposable flat lens for peeling. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm not kidding. It, all of us value visualization tremendously in vitreoretinal surgery. It's a particular area of interest to me. I really value uh, the, the viewing system, and I still use the Avi wide field systems, uh, contact versus non-contact. I'm a pupil of Stanley Chang, and I've never given that up, and I won't. I really think the view is ma- magnificent. And for peeling an ILM, really the disposable flat lens from uh, Dork is fantastic, and, yeah. and, I'm, I, and I'm glad that you and, and other companies still pay attention to these small details because they're critical. And you, you have to use the ultra peel forceps with it and, and you will I'll see try it. Yeah. I'll try it. I have not used those, so I won't, but I will try it. And I saw in my studies to prepare to talk to you, uh, the, the diagrams of that forceps. So I'm going to try it for sure. And, I, and I've been using the tissue blue now. And I think so that combination is wonderful for peeling the ILM and, we often make it look easy, but it's a very challenging skill and learning how to do it properly is, uh, is difficult and visualization is everything. Thanks for that lens. I was a, a big fan from day one. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> what about, uh, and we only have a couple of minutes, but I want to hear about what you think for the future. You know, broadly speaking, what are the directions for you personally within the company, but really for the company overall in the coming two to three years? New innovations, marketing ap- approach, what, what are your focus? What is your focus? 
Oh, our, our focus is definitely growth, right? So we've got a very, uh, very we're a private equity backed company. So I forgot to say that, but that's pretty important. Um, uh, which is which is great news because we've got a we've got a unique shareholder and and and, and who is really very much focused focused on growth. Uh, where we've got a, a great relationship, great collaboration together. So that makes things really, um, really uh, very much fun. So uh, to your question, um, you know, we want basically to double equity within the coming four, three to five years, right? So, so which, is, which is a challenge, but we've got a very solid base, as, as you and me, we just discussed. Um, uh, the key drivers there, uh, it's mainly organic. So we're looking also at inorganic growth, uh, you know, to get what we don't have. Either, you know, technologies that we would like to have for the future, but also, uh, you know, completing our portfolio when we had, you know, to prioritize on uh, on the new platform that we're going to bring to the market um, early next year and of this year. So we're, we're going to bring a new, um, a new platform there with significant innovation. So we're, we're ahead of competition. So, uh, so we're preparing that in the midterm, obviously innovation will remain a key driver. One of the mandate I was given by my board <laughs> as a CEO, you know, you need to listen to your board and work Everybody together. Everybody has a boss. Uh, I forgot to say that and communicate properly, which is uh, the other the other piece of it. Um, yeah, so you know, innovation is for the future. What's the next step, right? In 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 retina surgery, so we're looking at new approaches, new surgical approaches, but also new therapeutical approaches, like gene therapy, as you well know, is is becoming reality now. So um, so we're gonna bring soon, you know, a, a subretinal injection uh, modality with uh, with our machine, which uh, which will be FDA approved. So we want to be in that game and and continue in this direction, uh, and and we're looking, you know, at new technologies, artificial intelligence, you know, virtual rela- reality, augmented reality, how it may contribute to the future of retina surgery and of the of the OR. So uh, so that's what we're looking, you know, around what we're doing uh, today, but obviously continuing to work with the surgeons to bring them what they don't have. As you said, you know, it's not just about fancy stuff, but it's about the small instrument that is so useful and that you guys um, want, want to have. So uh, so growth is clearly clearly the focus, continuing to keep the, the customer relationship, especially in the U.S., bring the U.S., uh, uh, the voice of the U.S. market and the U.S. surgeons into Docs Innovation is a, is a key priority for me, uh, which is very very important to us. And um, and yeah, as a, as I said, continue to develop our teams and develop uh, our markets with um, the two big priorities on U.S. and China. But not only we're strong in Japan as well, so we wanted continue to grow uh, there and in other in other markets so very um, very exciting uh, very exciting future as you can see and i could speak about it for hours <laughs> as you guess <laughs> thanks very much uh, pierre thanks for joining us these are really interesting uh, talking points and yes we could spend a lot of time i'm i'm sure you spent a lot of time both thinking about all this and obviously communicating all this to your teams who then go out and have to communicate the message and the mission to the rest of us in the community. I thank you for taking the time to uh, speak with us and uh, and explain this. And I I congratulate you on your successes at Doric already, but for future successes. Thank you so much. It's, It's been a great pleasure. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for listening, everyone. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of the OIS Podcast. Be sure to subscribe to our iTunes channel so you don't miss any ophthalmology insights. Got a story of your own to tell? Apply to be a guest at OIS.net. 